Let's go over a new feature called Display Clone in Palette Master Ultimate. With multiple SW displays, what you can simply do is clone a setting from one display from an actual calibration over to another SW, guaranteeing better color consistency and accuracy across multiple monitors. Let's find out how to do this and what are some of the considerations. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Let's briefly go over my setup, some consideration, and then we'll do a live demonstration so you can do this on your own too. For this, I have BenQ newest SW272U. This is their 27-inch 4K hardware calibrated display. And the most notable feature about this panel is that it has a new fine coated panel. Essentially, the front panel itself pretty much just looks like a smooth matte paper. There's almost no reflection, and this is getting really close to the coating that we have on the SW321C, which is really fantastic. The next display over, this is the predecessor to this model, the SW271C. This is also a 27-inch 4K display. However, it does have a matte panel. It is not the fine-coated one, and there's a little bit more reflectant on this panel relative to this new SW272U. All these displays are linked to my 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is the one with the liquid retina XDR display. So it has a mini LED and also a glass front, which is glossy. Now, one of the things I want to quickly go over is that what we're seeing right now are the same background wallpaper. And even though the color looks really close to each other, there are going to be some differences. Let's quickly start out with the mini LED with the glossy cover. So on this one, everything that you show on this display will just look flattering even with just little work in post-production or in editing. You get much more contrast, much higher color fidelity. But the issue with this is it makes your picture, makes your edit looks that much more flattering, and it doesn't really give you the true edit that you have. So what this really translates to is something that looks amazing on glossy display. However, when you take them to matted display or even to print, it doesn't look that good anymore. The contrasts are no longer optimized because this is showing you much more contrast than the display can. Now let's move on to the SW271C. This one has a matted panel. Again, like I said, it's not the fine art coated panel. However, this does give you a lot more of an honest picture as to the way how you are going to see and edit your pictures. It's giving you a more honest look and it's not quite as contrasty, which is going to closely align to a printed image that you're going to get out in the end. And the next one over, the SW. 272U. With this one, it's really like a matted paper. So there are going to be some variations between all three of these. And part of the reason why I brought this up is because even though you are doing a display clone between two SW displays, there may be some contrast and some colors that may not entirely match properly all the way because you're still talking about a different panel, even though on the hardware calibration side of things, we are able to match those parameters. Let's go over what display cloning does. How does it function and some of the consideration you should think about? So the setup that I have is a ideal setup for doing display cloning. Essentially, this is a new feature that is built into Palette Master Ultimate. And what it allows you to do is to do a hardware calibration on one of your SW displays while matching the output exactly from another SW. Now, you may think that we can go in and dial the settings so that they match. For example, Adobe RGB 1998 on both of these, Luminous 120, Gamma 2.2, so on and so forth. But the reality of it is those are theoretical values that we put in, theoretical parameters. They're not necessarily the actual output of display. They're going to come really close, but it's not going to land precisely there. So what display cloning does is when I go to this process, you'll see it's going to pop up with a screen. And what it's going to do is measure the actual value, the actual output of the display itself, and use those value as the parameter to run the hardware calibration on another SW. The most ideal thing you can do is run these on two SWs. And to start this whole process out, you want to go in and pick one of your SW display as the primary to go in and do a hardware calibration first. In this situation, I already done a hardware calibration on this SW272U, and I'm using the photography default setting. So this is Adobe RGB 1998, 120 luminance, gamma 2.2, and absolute black for the black point that I'm using. We're going to see in a bit that these values are going to come really close when we're measuring it, but they're not quite exactly 100% according to the parameter we set. Now you might ask, for instance, 
If you have two SAB display, one is compatible with Palette Master Ultimate, the other one, a previous generation SAB, is only compatible with Palette Master Element, what should you do? What you can simply do then is run the calibration on one of your SW with Palette Master Element first and use Palette Master Ultimate to clone the setting from that display so that it matches. The whole goal of this is so much so color accuracy, but also color consistency across different SW displays. The last question I'm going to answer is, can you use this on displays that are not SW? Technically, yes, but it's something that I don't recommend that anyone do because the issue being that the other displays that you may have, even if it is BenQ PD display series, they're not necessarily hardware calibrated display that has been calibrated to a known good reference value and are known to be accurate. So even though you may have a software calibrated display, they're not going to be quite as good as a hardware calibrated display. And that's something that I would not recommend. So for this, what I'm going to do, like I said before, I already ran the calibration on this SW272U. This is in calibration one, and I'm going to go in and start the Palette Master Ultimate on the SW271C. I'm using the i1 Display Pro Plus as my setting. However, the calibrator I'm using to do this demonstration will be the Calibrite Display Plus HL. This is their latest device. And yes, they are already compatible with Palette Master Ultimate and also Palette Master Element, which is fantastic. So I'll click on Start. And with this, there are the parameter screen. Now it's going to start at Photography, Adobe RGB preset at the very top. We're not even going to worry about that. What we're gonna do is come and click on Edit Target. And with this, we'll see photography, Adobe RGB again. I'll click on that drop down list at the very top and choose other monitors. And you may see that right below it, there are options to measure the different parameters, but we're not going to measure just one at a time. We're going to do this. At the very top, there is the green button or the turquoise button that says measure all. I'll click on that and I'll get this warning. This function is only available for BenQ SW series monitors. Color consistency may not be achieved when using non SW series monitors. So what I'm gonna do is click on continue and I'll get this dialog. And it will say drag the measurement window to the other display. So what I'm gonna do is I will use this SW272U as the master. So I'll simply just drag this over to the next display. All right, I'm going to my little corner now and what I'm gonna do is click on next. So for this, I'll prep the device, hang it from the display, and I'll tilt this back. As usual, when you tilt this back, if everything lines up with the display, you can simply run a measurement or a calibration in a bright room, you're going to be fine. I'll click on next. It already tells me that I need to tilt the display back, which I have already done. And I align the device on the display like so. I'll click on start. So this is during all the different measurement parameters to get the value, the output of this display. All right, now that the measurement has completed, it measures a few patches, as you can see, different grays and also color. So now we get the white point, we get the luminance, the gamma, and also the black point value. I'll press on done with this. And then simply enough, what I can do on my SW271C is also press on done. You can see that the parameters we're getting right now are not the preset parameters, the theoretical one anymore. They're the actual readout from the other display. And this is how we're gonna gain even better color consistency across multiple SW models. What I'm simply going to do is select calibration one. And one thing before I start this whole process is that if you take a look at the background now, I mean, the colors are really close to each other already. And this is just running the standard calibration Adobe RGB but we're gonna get it even closer. So what I'm gonna do is click on next. We'll tilt the display back, hang our device on the display, ensuring that it lays flat. Click on next, and we're going to start the hardware calibration process. For this, it's going to do the initialization and it's going to match this display to the parameter and the output on this one. I'll have this run through the whole calibration process and then what we're going to do at the end is we'll come through, take a look at the calibration report, see how it does with the validation and everything, and we'll wrap this up. All right, so it has finished the hardware calibration process. It did the validation and everything. But one thing that I noted about the display itself as the panel coding. I want to quickly just show you one thing before 
we go through the validation process. So you can see how this is almost not reflecting the light at all that I have in the studio, which is like um, a hexagon box right there. And if I tilt this up, I mean, you can see that my laptop has literally been reflecting that light the entire time. And you can see clearly the shape and outline of the softbox I'm using. You can see a little bit clearer here, but when it comes to this display, it's just really pretty much all the views. So what I'm gonna do now is let's tilt everything back and we're going to check the calibration report. I'll click on check report. And with this, I'm able to get a Delta E value of 0 0.72 and a max of 1.44. What this is telling us is that this hardware calibration is able to get within a range that is pretty much imperceptible from the other displays. So with this, what I'm gonna do is minimize these result down so you can see a comparison. Just based on what I can see right now in the studio, just looking at this, the colors are really close to each other. But the best thing that we can do is let's take a look at some more samples and see what we can find. So. What I'm gonna do is launch system settings. I want to change the background on all of these and we'll see how they look. So this is another one, the night skies with a lot of stars. Colors coming really close to each other, the green matching really well, the purple matching really well. It's something that's really great to see actually across multiple SW displays. And this is something that we have had before but not really quite to this extent. Let's do another one because we already have the green one. Let's take a look at something with a lot more colors. For, for instance, something like this. Yes, and as we can see right now, the colors and everything are really matching across SW display nicely. Now I can show you multiple more samples of this, but simply enough, I think we started to get the idea already that Display Clone is a new powerful feature inside Palette Master Ultimate. And if you have an SW display, whether both of them are compatible with Palette Master Ultimate, or even if you have the previous generation SW displays, you can still use this display clone and get really great results from it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new, and in Art Retrust.